Our first reading for this Sunday is taken from the book of Sirach. We would like to reflect on true freedom in obeying God's law. Many times when we are before a command or a law, we feel that our freedom is being restricted. But in the readings for today, we are being led to the deeper understanding of freedom that leads to obedience to God's command. The book of Sirach tells us that while the commandment comes from God directed to us, God has also given us the capacity to choose whether to obey God's commandment or to reject it. Freedom expressed in the capacity to choose. And this freedom ultimately is a gift of God. This freedom that we exercise is not of our making. Even the capacity to choose God's commandment, to follow God's commandment, is given by God. But it is left to us how to use such freedom. The first reading, of course, invites people to choose to obey God's law. To use their freedom to be loyal to God. So this alerts us to the fact that freedom can be used to go against God, to show God our disdain. Freedom can be used by human beings to be disloyal, unfaithful to God. But Sirach presents to us the ideal. Now, this is not just a matter of choosing between one thing, one object, or another object. Sirach also tells us that if the choice is between following God's commandment and disobeying God's commandment, this is a choice between life and death. This is a special exercise of freedom, quite different from choosing like, what will I wear today? A green colored shirt or a blue colored shirt? No, it is not a matter of life and death. It's simply a matter of color. But when the item, if you want to call it that, the object before us is fidelity to God or infidelity, disloyalty to Him, then it is not a simple choice. It is not a simple matter. It is a, a matter of life or death. It spells out the difference between going to fire, into fire, or going into life-giving water. Sirach tells us that in our hearts, this heart created by God with freedom, God does not command us to choose sin. God does not command us to choose self-destruction. So Sirach is motivating people. What God is commanding you to do is for your own good, for your own life. So please choose it. Choose it. And we cannot hide anything from God. God sees our hearts. This is the wisdom of God. God sees how we will use our God-given freedom. Will we use it to choose life for ourselves? And the path is obedience to God's command. Or will we use that freedom, better misuse that freedom, to choose our own destruction? when that is not the will of God, when that is not the command of God. So let us go enter the wisdom of God. Let us align ourselves with God. That is freedom, choosing the good, 
because it is choosing life for ourselves. Of the Lord. The second reading for this Sunday is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We have been reflecting on true freedom in obeying God's commandments. In the first reading from the book of Sirach, we see how God has equipped us to obey freedom. And the first reading sort of encourages us to use that freedom to choose the path of obedience to God. For in obedience to God, we find life. God does not command anything that will lead us to sin or to self-destruction. But we know that the misuse of freedom amounts to choosing what is not in accord with God's desire, that we live fully and not destroy ourselves. In the second reading, St. Paul talks about the Holy Spirit that purifies human freedom. Yes, freedom is part of God's gift to all human beings. But this freedom, freedom which is often abused, is now purified by the Holy Spirit. St. Paul talks about the wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world that is often used towards self-destruction. I guess even up to our time, we can give examples of so-called exercises of human wisdom, which in the end led, lead people to destruction of life in the name of freedom. Like teenagers who will say to their parents, I am a grown-up person now. Please respect my freedom. They don't want any limitation on their so-called freedom. But they use the freedom in order to really self-destruct. Embracing vices. Embracing all wrong advices or counsels from people who do not care for them. Being gullible you know, in terms of advertising and all the influences of materialism and ambition. At first, that is enjoyable. Oh, I can do what I want to do. But if you look at it closely, it is the wisdom of this world leading to self-destruction. And the first reading says, God, God does not command anything that will lead to our destruction. But that is the wisdom of this world. It can entice us so that we think it is the wiser way to go. But St. Paul tells us, we who have followed Jesus Christ, we have been given a share of the wisdom of God. Thanks to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that scrutinizes the deep things of God. And this Holy Spirit scrutinizes all matters. And if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, then our eyes will be opened. We will acquire the vision that only the wisdom of God could give. We will be given also the purity of motivation and heart that will enable us to choose the path of God leading to life. So here, it is not enough that we have freedom. St. Paul tells us human freedom has been touched, especially for believers, has been touched by the Holy Spirit. This is a grace. But to my dear brothers and sisters in the Christian faith, this is added responsibility. We cannot 
claim now. Oh, I did not know. Well, aside from freedom, we have the Holy Spirit enabling us to see the wisdom of God. Are we using our freedom responsibly? Are we allowing the Holy Spirit to purify our exercise of freedom so that we will choose the path of life and not the path of the world, which leads to self-destruction? Our Gospel reading for this Sunday is taken from St. Matthew. We have been reflecting on true freedom in obeying God's commandment, God's law. As I said at the beginning of this reflection, many times we make freedom and obedience to God's law fight each other. It's either one or the other. It's either more of one and less of the other. But we see that uh, true freedom is found in obeying God's commandment. In the first reading from the book of Sirach, we are affirmed in our God-given freedom, the capacity to choose. But Sirach reminds us that this gift called freedom should be used to choose life, to choose harmony with God's will. For God does not command anything that is evil or will destroy the human person. So, by obeying God, we are making use of our freedom in the right way, and it will redound to our good. Someone who uses freedom or his or her freedom to obey God is really choosing life for oneself. In the second reading, St. Paul tells the Corinthians that there is a use of freedom called the wisdom of this world that is so enticing that many people choose it, choose to use their freedom that way. But this particular exercise of freedom leads to destruction. But thanks to the Holy Spirit poured into our hearts, human freedom can now be scrutinized and we are able to discern what is in accordance with God's will. So it is not just freedom. It is also the grace of the Holy Spirit that will enable us to choose life found in God's law and in God's will. And hopefully, through grace and natural freedom, we will be able to find life in obeying God's will. In the Gospel, Jesus tells us that He came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Wow! So, we do not expect from Jesus, no, uh, an attitude or even an action that will disregard the law or the will of God. In fact, the way he describes his mission is in terms of fulfillment of the law, fulfilling the law. How does Jesus fulfill the law? By allowing us to be totally free. Hmm. How can we reach total freedom so that the law of God will not only be fulfilled, obeyed but fulfilled you know in the gospel for today the fulfillment of the law the apex of freedom is found in love the heart that has been purified by the holy spirit and so is able to love purely selflessly only in the heart where true love, pure love is found, can we also find true freedom and true obedience to the will of God. And in that heart, 
of pure love, pure freedom, and obedience, we find the fulfillment of the law. So the fulfillment of the law is not something verified only in external action. While maybe at some point we would look for an external manifestation of agreement with the law, for Jesus that is not enough. I may be doing an external action, but Jesus wants to see the heart. Is the heart totally free? Is the heart totally obedient? Is the heart totally in love? Without that, the external observance is a show. Is a show. We know that. For example, even in daily life, I may externally follow traffic rules. When I see the red light, I may stop externally. But in my heart, maybe, no, I don't believe in uh, being a vehicle of uh, safety, an agent of safety for uh, pedestrians and for my passengers. Maybe I'm just afraid that uh, the police officer or the traffic enforcer might hmm, catch me. So in my heart, if there is a chance to transgress the law, I would. So the external observance does not guarantee that the heart is totally free to obey out of love. Now, Jesus points to three examples where an external observance of the law is not enough. The first is the law against murder. Now, many of us will say, oh, I have not murdered anyone. I have not killed anyone. But Jesus says, wait, if you get angry, if you harbor hatred towards your neighbor, you are already committing murder. So, the absence of an external act of killing is not yet a fulfillment of the law. How what is happening in your heart? Remember, the external act of killing begins with enslavement to anger, to hatred, being unfree to love. And so that will lead to a desire to inflict harm on someone. So murder begins in an unfree heart that will probably not listen to the Holy Spirit and will just give vent to one's anger. The second is chastity, not committing adultery. Okay, many people will say, oh, I have been faithful to my wife, I've been faithful to my husband, I have not engaged in any uh, external affairs. But Jesus is saying, wait a minute, what's happening in your heart? If a man looks lustfully at a woman, then adultery has already begun in one's heart. The heart that is not faithful and still entertains, even imaginatively, lustful alliances with people who are not uh, my partner, then for Jesus, that heart is a slave of lust. That heart is not fully free to love. And so that heart is already committing adultery. The third is, in the area of truth. No? Some people take oaths no? and say, okay, I testify to the truth. Oh, we have seen many of that in courts. No, they do the external oath-taking. We see this also when uh, government officials are installed into office. They even have the Bible in front of them and they solemnly take the oath. Now, Jesus is saying, wait a minute, it's not the external oath-taking. What is happening in the heart? If you mean yes, say yes. If you mean no, say no. Be truthful in the heart. Is the heart free to be attached to truth? Is my heart a lover 
of truth. That's where the fulfillment of the law begins. Totally free to love, totally free to obey God's dictates that will lead to life. After all, where do we experience true life? Only in true love. My dear brothers and sisters, true freedom in obeying God's law is in love, pure love. Pure love is not just obedience. Pure love is true freedom. And true love, pure love, leads to life. You know, my dear brothers and sisters,